Welcome into my studio. I thought I'd do something different and show you what I'm actually working on at the moment in the studio. And this is on the 17th of August, 2020. So something very different for my uh, Patreon art channel members. This Cape Buffalo has got lots and lots of textures, as you can see, and I'm building up those textures. I've got the reference photo on the left hand side. And I'll be coming back in and adjusting colors and uh, tones at a later stage. This is really where I'm building up um, from the base layer and building up the details and textures on top. So as I said, nothing's finished there. I'll be coming back into it. But on this video, I thought I'd show you how I tackled the horn on the left hand side. So as I mentioned, doing something like a Cape Buffalo is really all about the textures. And the horns have got lots of um, particles on there and mud that's built up over the years and marks where they've been using the horns and probably fighting as well. So there really is years worth of history on the surface of the horns. Sometimes they caked in mud. But uh, for this one, it's got, as I said, lots and lots of um, small texture marks, uh, indentations on the central part of it. But then as we go out to the left, as it sweeps up and arcs around, it gets smoother and smoother. And you can see that that highlight at the top really adds to that effect of shine. Now I haven't started to put the the background body in yet and the reason I've done that my my plan of thinking for this one was to kind of get the horn 80% uh, 90% done because sort of I've got the tonal values there because it's critical that the body is not very dark because that would then compete with the darks on the horn so I needed or I wanted to try and get the darks in place and some of those lights here as well. So when I come to do the body, I know exactly the right tonal range of lightness and darkness to make the body go back in the artwork and to make these horns really stand out and be a big part of uh, interest, really this, mainly the center of interest. So you can see what I've done so far, I'm using pastel matte paper only use pastel pencils so far in this drawing and I'm just getting in the shape showing myself where the elements are that are going to be light and areas that are going to be dark and just putting in general idea of the colors as well so we can see on the horn top left we've got kind of a purpley blue there and also in that arc in the center of the arc on the inner surface as well so I like to get those colors in and they can be quite punchy. You know, you can play with the colors and really emphasize the colors if you want. It's totally up to you when you do your subject. If you want to make it look uh, very realistic and perhaps subdue the colors or do you want to really play with the colors and perhaps make them more interesting and more exciting. So I've laid some base colors down, rubbed it into the pastel matte surface with my fingers that allows me then to put more layers on top. Now pastel matte will really take a lot of layers anyway, more so than I find any other paper. That's just my experience and my, my personal uh, findings. But I find when I put the underlayers down, if I rub them into the surface, it allows me to get sharper, crisper details on top. Now, of course, on my Patreon videos, I can go into much more detail with uh, tips, techniques, and a lot more live video than I do on YouTube. And in general, my videos last for around about probably four hours, three or four hours on average. And I've got videos on there for beginners all the way up to really advanced as well. So something for everybody. And when you join Patreon, you actually get um, access to all of the videos from the last few years uh, that I've done on the level you sign up at. So it's really great value. And as I said, I can go into a lot more uh, in-depth instruction on those videos. So you can see I put that base color in. Now with pastels, we don't have to worry too much about lights going over darks because the lights sit very well over a darker underlayer. And you'll see how I build up 
those little um, lighter marks of, of mud and debris and markings that's on the horn and I can lay them on top so we've got a real advantage with uh, pastel matte paper now the other good thing with the pastel matte paper is it holds the pastel very well so it doesn't just smudge and kind of all muddy now if you're using other papers some smoother papers or on grey papers if you rub it then with your finger it'll all blend together and smudge whereas when I'm doing it I can rub it extremely hard back and forth if I want it to get smooth and put more pastel on top or I can rub it lightly if I want to smooth it out just a small amount but still keep a lot of the actual texture and the markings that I've put on the surface so really the best of both worlds I'm going generally in the direction that that horn seems to be sweeping down you can see the markings are really coming down the surface I'm not pushing too hard with my pencil so I'm not depositing a great amount of pastel and I'm also staying away from the areas that got the extreme highlights remember I said that the pastel will layer on top extremely well with pastel matte paper but when I want something pure white or pure dark I get those colors in on a bare paper so nothing under the paper I don't want them to be influenced by the uh, colors underneath at all in those cases so just a little bit of gray going on top with pastels it's very much like oils where we kind of start with the mid tone to dark tones and then layer the lighter tones on top now I'll just speed this up a bit and then come back to you when I'm starting to add some more details Now I'm beginning to layer the details, so I'm not going in with the really bright highlights yet. Going in with this, it's kind of a um, a muted grey, and that's a Carbothello pencil I'm using. You can see it's Carbothello by the colour of the pencil is actually on the whole shaft of the pencil. So that's a Carbothello. And I'm pushing fairly hard to deposit quite a bit of pastel here. Now I'm not covering up all of the underlayer, I'm adding texture on top. And I'm also making sure that I'm getting lots of other colours and tones in there. As you see on the reference photo on the left, there's lots and lots of different colours in there. It's not just grey and white or black. And the more colours we put in, the more interest it gives to the, the viewer of the artwork. And as I mentioned, I will come back in and adjust all this. This is really, you know, a, a base layer with some detailing on, but once the whole of the paper is covered, that's when I'll really come back in and refine those colors, punch up colors, make other areas sharper and others more subtle. Now as I'm layering more details on top and lighter details, coming in with a sharper pencil, pushing a little bit harder in places as well, depositing some more of that pastel. 
I'm not covering up all the areas. You need to look at the reference, but you don't need to um, on a very complicated section like this. You don't need to duplicate all those marks. I haven't got the patience for that myself and you really don't need to. As I say in most of my videos, I'm after the essence of the animal and picking up the essence of the area. So I just want it to look uh, real and to have the lovely colors and tones in there, but I don't need all those markings in exactly the right places or in the same places. It doesn't make any difference. A different animal would have different markings or um, texture on the, t on the horns and possibly in a couple of months time, this particular animal would have different textures on the horns, even in a day or an hour if it went to a mud bath or something. So it's not essential to get every one of those little tiny indentations exactly in the right place. Unless for your own enjoyment, you're doing something like um, photographic hyperrealism and you want to spend a couple of months on this, there's really no need to do it. So on this top edge, we're getting some light that's coming from the sky above. So I'm putting some light blue in there. Just in a few places. And the more we work on an area, the more accurate everything gets, the more you can see the subtleties that's required, the differences between the reference, the differences between the drawing. And also, the more that you actually draw and paint and create and look at references and look at nature, the more you see these subtle colour and tonal changes. So it's easier. The more you do, the more you see. The easier it gets. Once again, going in that direction that these markings are coming down the horn. Don't need a very sharp pencil for this yet. Now remember I left that area so that I could get my really bright white on some nice fresh paper and as you can see as soon as I start to put that in place it really begins to uh, zing and make that horn look like it's, it's smooth and shiny. The animal's probably been using the horn to rub up against things and, and use it kind of like a tool. So we've got some blues and purples, light colours that are coming down from the sky above and the surroundings. It's important to get all these little colour changes in place. And I'll need to add some more purples when I come back and start to really refine it and add the final highlights as well. I can use a pencil on the side to get, create smoothness. I'll slightly blend in then into the edges. You can see I'm softening edges with the pencil. You don't have to be blending with your finger at later stages because then you, you are going to wipe out a lot more of the detail. All I want are real subtle blends and subtle dark areas for the texture. And the horn will really start to come forward in the drawing, as I mentioned, when I begin putting the background body in. Just some of that dark flesh colour. And you can see I'm switching between brands of pencils. Pitt and Carbothello are my two favourites. But I also got pencils from um, Conti and Gioconda. It's good to have a nice set with a wide range of colours. I 
Okay, so as I darken up a few areas, I hope you've enjoyed this little sneak peek into the uh, the video I'm doing. As I said, this is on the 17th of August, so I'll be releasing the final video on my Patreon channel real soon. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.